Hello, this is a special one item unboxing. So let's see what we got in here. I was tipped about receiving this by email, so I was expecting it. For the moment I will leave it face down. This is a 5 inch TFT LCD panel with an adapter board that accepts two channel analog video input and uh, as a full disclosure gearbest.com sent this for free to advertise their website. This module sells for $23 free shipping at their website so check the links in the description if you are interested in getting one. Let me show you the front of the LCD panel. So as you can see not a very big screen at 5 inch something the size of my palm. Possible applications for this kind of module are industrial control, security monitoring, commercial display, vehicle camera display and RCFPV systems but of course not limited to these you can do whatever you want with this kind of LCD modules. So let's take a closer look at the uh, module especially at the control module let me just zoom in on this. As you can see the, the package is composed of two main parts. We have the TFT panel and the driver board. I couldn't find any info on the TFT panel but it seems it's manufactured by Shenzhen Sparkling Group and its part number is FPC LT9 QH5001. They do have a website showing different panels but they don't list this one on their website so it might be a custom job for a client I'm not sure. Uh, about the uh, resolution since I couldn't find any info I'm going to have to guess uh, and I think it's 800 by 480. I'm also going to guess it's using an RGB interface on this flex cable possibly a 16-bit one. These are standard features of TFT panels of this size so this one is likely to be using them. Also looking at the datasheet of the driver IC, the MS703, we can see it has video output RGB interface so that confirms my guess on the RGB interface. The MS703 is quite a versatile chip with multiple analog and digital video inputs and the ability to switch between them. Too bad it's not that well documented and supported you will mostly find uh, information in uh, written in Chinese. On this board we notice a couple of switchers right here. Uh, we have the inductors, diodes and capacitors which are that giveaway these are switchers and a couple of uh, linear regulators for supplying the required voltage for the MS703 and TFT panel. Right here on the right side we have three tax switches used to operate the OSD menu which we'll take a look at in a minute. Up here we have the analog input in the form of a JST connector with three pins. We have a ground and two analog video input pins. And right here next to the driver chip I believe we have an EEPROM which is needed for storing all the configuration for the driver chip. If you would need to change some settings I think you could just download that EEPROM image and try to figure out how the different settings are aligned inside the memory. The correct way to do it would be to have the registry configuration tool from MSTAR, the manufacturer of the driver IC, and that would allow you to configure the registers in a GUI and then generate the required EEPROM image but I don't think you can find that tool on the internet. Enough about the hardware construction, let me show you how this thing works. So as you can see I have this uh, small camera module, it is a Sony module with composite video output on this yellow wire. Uh, the module needs uh, 12 volt power. So I have this camera module connected to one of the video inputs of the driver board. I'm going to apply power and see how the module reacts. So 
So as we can see the module immediately detected the camera on uh, AV1 input. Let me just zoom in on the screen. So as you can see I'm using this uh, wide angle lens camera because you can sort of see the fisheye lens effect on the LCD screen. And it's looking quite good with a high update rate. Unfortunately, we can prob you can probably notice some signal integrity issues, but I'm sure those problems are related to the cabling I'm using right here, which is not optimal. If I were to be using shielded cables with shielded connectors all the way from the camera up to the converter module, I'm sure I wouldn't be seeing those uh, noise patterns on the screen. So let's play with the OSD menu and see what it can do. Pressing this button doesn't do anything. Let's start with the top one. Nothing. Middle button. Okay, so I have brightness setting and I'm guessing the upper button and the lower one control the plus or minus. Let's test that. So it's the other way around. The board should be held the other way around because the bottom button means plus. So we can increase the brightness quite a lot, but obviously it looks best at its default setting, 50%. Let's see what else do we get if we press this again, the middle button. We have contrast setting. Okay, that one works also. We have a color setting. A zoom setting. Yeah, we can go to a 4x3 format or a 16x9. And the language setting. And I guess that's all. And the reset option. Let's try the reset option. Not sure how to activate the reset. Or maybe you just leave it like that and it will automatically reset if that option is selected. Yeah, so that's it for the OSD menu. A very simple menu with uh, brightness, contrast, colors, aspect ratio and language settings as well as a reset option if you accidentally switch it to Chinese for example. So that's it about this uh, TFT panel module. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it in any particular project, but nice to have in the lab. For example, you can test camera modules with it or anything that outputs a video signal. You can just input into this module and check how it works on this small screen. So I definitely recommend getting one if you need a small module that can show analog video signals. As always, thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like button below if you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe to get updates on more content like this. See you next time.